The Bears fall to four and five on the season. If you're looking at the playoffs, the Bears now sit tenth in the NFC. <laughs> With Green Bay on deck. It is Packer Week officially. And this is one of the lowest points I can remember for a team that had expectations going into a season to be here this week after that game and after the last three weeks. Uh, Clearly to me, without a doubt, Matt Eberflus has lost this team, lost the locker room. He needs to make a change. He's said now twice last, uh, last night and then today when he met the media that there will be a change offensively. He did not say what that change will be. I think many of us think that Shane Waldron will no longer be the offensive coordinator, will no longer be calling the plays for this offense. But that seems to be uh, maybe the extent of the changes as we head towards the all-important Green Bay game this weekend. And yesterday was an absolute disaster. Yeah, yesterday sucked um, on multiple levels because not only did they lose that game, uh, but they lost it and it looked like half the team quit on the field yesterday. Uh, it looked like half of the players, you and I, were there. We, we can see the sidelines. We can see what happens, you know, when they're showing you replays on TV. Like, it looked like half the team. Not a, There's a difference between not wanting to be out there and quitting. Like, when you're losing and you don't want to be out there, but, like, this now two weeks in a row, this team has quit. And it starts with the head coach. They, the reason they brought Matt Eberflus back is because they said through the three-win season, through whatever was happening in the beginning of last season, with the, starting with the losing streak and then eventually winning seven games, this team never quit on Matt Eberflus. Well, it's happening now. It's happening in front of your eyes. And giving up 19 points to one of the worst offenses in the NFL – and only scoring, you know how hard it is to only score three points? Like, to not even get the garbage pity touchdown at the end of the game. Like, it's so hard to only score three points in an NFL game. Just view it in the context of watching Sunday Night Football last night. You had dueling kickers kicking and attempting 58-yard field goals. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, kickers today in this league are so good. That all you have to do is barely get past midfield, and you're in field goal range. And this team isn't good enough, and they don't have a kicker with a strong enough flag to even get into field goal range to score more than three points. You're dead on. It's crazy in this era of NFL football to score three points in a game against a defense that you faced last weekend. One of the worst defenses in the entire league. Mm -hmm. And you only were able to come up with three points. I mentioned to Waddle and Sylvie how annoyed I was in the second half. The Bears get the football to start the second half, and they go punt three and out. The next time they touch the ball, they get one first down. They hold the ball for six plays and punt. The third possession of the second half, punt three and out. The fourth possession of the half, the Bears punt three and out. You're trailing by 10, 13-3 at that point. It's still a game. You're still in it. And you punt the ball three and out three separate times. And you get one first down in your first four possessions of the second half. And off of that final punt, that fourth possession, it was a fourth and 16 at the Bears three. All they did was move backwards. There were 13.46 left in the fourth quarter. The game was 13-3. New England on the following possession go on a 10-play drive that eats up six minutes of clock. And they kick a field goal to put it at 16-3 which in this world of Bears suck that we live in, was the game. Mm -hmm. Because 16-3 was all you need with a rookie quarterback and a bad coaching staff and a bad defense. That's all you need to beat the Bears is 16-3. You melt away the clock. You have about seven minutes left on uh, in the game. And this Bears offense can't do anything. No. Can't do a single thing. No, this uh, it was so frustrating. And sitting there at Soldier Field, it was boring. They're a boring team to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And this New England team, they were 31st in defensive DVOA heading into the game. They were bottom five in sack percentage and pressure percentage. Like this was set up that even with your injuries, a tackle should be able to. But you saw every problem, like everything that's wrong with the Bears. 
was on display yesterday from the quarterback not being ready, the team not being ready to start the game, the weapons not being able to create separation, the offensive line giving up nine sacks to a, and, and some of them are Caleb's fault. I would say about 50 50, right? They're not all Caleb's fault. They're not all the offensive line's fault. And then on your defense, Drake May and the New England Patriots are one of the most sacked, not most sacked, but like they, they give up a ton of pressures. They give up a bunch of sacks. Like this team is one of the worst teams in the NFL for a reason. And you sacked him once. You got to Drake May once on the opening drive of the game, and that was it. After that, they were doing everything right. They were rolling him out. Matt Eberflus has been a head coach in the NFL for three years now. This is his third year. Gerard Mayo, we were talking about whether or not he's going to survive the year in his first year. You got out coached by a first-time guy. It's unacceptable. Why All did of it, it is. Why did it feel as if Kyler Gordon didn't blitz until we got to the fourth quarter? Have yeah. you ever noticed that with Matt Eberflus, that this defense sits back and waits and waits and waits and sits back and waits and is super conservative and sits back and wait, 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 Ben, don't break. Let's wait, wait, wait. And then they get into the fourth quarter when something has to happen, and they throw Kyler Gordon off a hot corner, and boom, you're making plays. You let the entire game, Drake May, just do whatever he wants. Where's that at the start of the game? I don't understand this. Matt Eberflus might go down as one of the worst coaches we've ever seen in this franchise's history. Yeah, I, I think, think we've given him a lot of rope to kind of figure it out, figure it out. This guy ain't it. He ain't it. No, no, he's not. At any level. He's and, not. And, like, let me ask this. Someone up there at House Hall should ask Matt Eberflus, how would you defend your own offense? Would he send people after Caleb Williams in this offensive line? Yeah. I don't think so. I think he would just wait, sit back, wait. Okay, let's see how it is in the fourth. Let's play complimentary football. Let's get on the grass. The whole thing. Would you go after a quarterback like Caleb Williams with an offensive line that can't protect him? I don't yeah. think he would. Just wait. He doesn't do that stuff until he gets the dire straits at the end of the game. Just wait. I don't know if it's going to happen this week against the Packers. I haven't looked into their numbers as like pressure percentage and sack percentage, but I do know the Vikings have the number one defense in the NFL. Do you understand what I'm saying there, yeah. though? Like, would Eberflus even know how to attack oh, yeah. an offense? No, you like, know why? You what know why? they're running? Because I'm not saying that the Patriots are running the same offense, but the Patriots have the same recipe. You've got a young quarterback, inexperienced. But what do you do? You rattle They're taking him. care of them, though. Yeah, it was absolutely. They were taking care of their quarterback. They couldn't get to him. And if you, want, if you want Caleb Williams